Top grammar and language mistakes. Spelling. 1. Writing then when you mean then. The first is a description of time when it's written with letter E. For example, I wrote the sales letter and then I wrote the advertisement, while the other one with the letter A is used when making a comparison. I am more sick of this picky client than you are. 2. Misspelling baited breath. If you write baited breath, everyone will suspect fishing is your favorite hobby. The word should be spelled baited, which comes from abated meaning held. Using accidentally instead of accidentally. There are quite a few words with ally suffixes incidentally and these should not be confused with words having ly suffixes independently. Accidentally makes it into some dictionaries, but it's regarded as a variant. It's wise to avoid variants if you can, because some people will become more concerned about your spelling than what you are selling. Or, writing that something has piqued your interest. We are not talking mountain climbing here. The correct word is picked. 5. Confusing wrecked with racked. If you are wrecked, with nurse, you are feeling as if you are being stretched on the torture device, the rack. You rack your brain when you try to write difficult stories. Whether rack, on the other hand, has to do with ruinous accidents. With luck, this won't apply to your writing, but it might just apply to the stock market, which has been racked by a recession. Six, word usage. Confusing into with in to. The word into is a preposition, a linking word, that answers the question where. For example, Donna walked into her office before noticing her CEO was sitting at her desk. Note that the where needn't always be a physical place. Donna could also go into business or go into graduate school, but on those occasions where in and to just happen to end up beside each other, they must remain separate words. For example, Peter walked in to be his supervisor. 7. Misusing literally. If your boss said, I literally felt like firing the entire department, would you think she really meant that? No, she meant it metaphorically. Small comfort, I know, but help her retain at least a few well-trained staff by stopping her from ever using literally, unless it's the actual literal truth. 8. Confusing addition with addition. I know both words sound alike, but they mean totally different things. An addition with E is the form in which a text, usually a book, is printed. An issue of a newspaper or magazine or a version of something that's a little different from the ordinary. For example, an experimental edition of a play. Addition with letter A, on the other hand, is what you do when you add up numbers, like 1 plus 1 is 2, where there is an increase. For example, there was an addition to our taxes this year. Or when you expand your house, the addition of the deck increased the value of our house significantly. 9. Saying you made a 360 degree turn when you changed direction. I've had many otherwise bright bosses say they made a 360 degree turn when they meant that they turned around completely. But think about it. If you turn around, so that you're facing in opposite direction, you've actually made a 180 degree turn. 10. Being redundant. Repeat after me. P-I-N stands for personal identification number. Therefore, 
You cannot say PIN number without being redundant. Similarly, CD-ROM stands for Compact Disc Read-Only Memory. DVD stands for Digital Video Disc or Digital Versatile Disc. And ATM stands for Automated Teller Machine. Thus, don't repeat the word disc or machine. Furthermore, never describe your favorite pet peeve. Stick with pet peeve alone. Personal favorite is another noxious phrase. Can you ever imagine an impersonal prey favorite? 11. Failing to understand the difference between hone and hone. To hone is to sharpen. You can hone a point, but you hone in on a target. This is why they don't call those birds honing pigeons. 12. Saying something is a mute point instead of a mood. Mood means open to discussion or debatable. Mute means silent. Much as we all might appreciate more mute points, they are not only ineffective, they are also incorrect. 13. Using scented around. Think about that phrase for a second. How could anything be scented around something else? The correct phrase is scented on. 14. The inability to distinguish between EG and IE. The abbreviation EG is Latin for exempli gratia, meaning for example. The abbreviation IE, on the other hand, stands for the Latin it est, meaning that is to say. So you might write, we like vegetables, e.g. broccoli, green beans and cauliflower. Or you might write, we like all vegetables, i.e. We are healthy eaters. Grammar 15. Using could of, would of, should of. These are all 100% wrong. Born of our sloppy speaking styles. Could have, would have, should have. These are the right ones. What you want to write is could have, would have, should have. We all coulda, woulda, shoulda become better at grammar. 16. Using me and somebody. I tell my children that it's common courtesy to put the other person first. Thus you should always say Fred and I went to the gym together. Or Susie and I saw that movie. 17. Using that instead of who and vice versa. If you are writing about people, always use who. If a company president says employees that are affected by layoffs will be greatly missed, no one is likely to believe him because he's treating them as objects by using the word that. 18. Using they when referring to a business. Starbucks said they would give everyone a free latte today. Although this might sound right, the correct sentence is Starbucks said it would give everyone a free latte today. And if that grates on your ears, then rewrite the sentence to avoid the problem. Starbucks is offering everyone a free latte today. Style 19. Using orient and orientate in the same piece of text. Both words are correct, meaning to determine one's position with reference to another point or to familiarize someone with new surroundings or circumstances. That said, the latter choice is British and widely considered incorrect in the US. Bottom line, if you spell theater with ER on the end rather than theater with RE, you should also use orient. 20. Using toward and towards interchangeably. Both words are correct, but again, the latter is British and the former is American. Which you choose depends on your audience, and whatever you do, be consistent. Apostrophes 21. 
using its with an apostrophe when you mean its without one. This is a mistake I see every day, whether on the web or in print. The rule is so breathtakingly simple that everyone should learn its stands for it is. The possessive version, the dog chewed on its bone, somehow prompts people to throw in an errant apostrophe. Whenever I see it apostrophe s, I always reread the sentence to ensure the correct meaning is it is. And when I see its, I reread the sentence to ensure it doesn't mean it is. 22. Using a random apostrophe. Is there a worse mistake than the photos are for sale at 50% off? Remember, apostrophes are used only in two cases. To signify a letter has been omitted, in its it represents the missing I from the word is. And to signify possession, the dog's dish of water was spilled by an anxious owner. Do not use random apostrophes or make any of these other mistakes or you'll be rotting your reader's socks.